Um, Christmas 1993, my wife gave me a book. Um, we'd only been married two years by that point. Uh, and it said, how to organise a conference. And I sort of dismissed the book and sort of said, look, I will never ever be in a job where I um, organise a conference. Um, but I then became a maths project officer in Alice Springs. Um, I'd only been in teaching for about seven years and it really opened my eyes. Um, I've still got the conference bag from it. So just a show of hands, anyone born in 1994? A few people? Oh, <laughs> so this? <laughs> yes. Um, so this... This bag is as old as you. <laughs> um, but, but at the conference was someone who played a, a really, at a, at a very pivotal time in my career, a huge influence was John Mason um, from, at the time, Open University and now Oxford University. And he's come through Alice Springs three times now. And you know, I think these sorts of events, it's all about relationships. But um, I think of, uh, why isn't that happening? Maybe I need to be on this side. Maybe, no, I know, maybe I need to turn it on. <laughs> um, motivating students to do problem solving in mathematics classroom. Well, the first thing I think you should always do is pick the naughty kid in the class. And give them a job, keep them busy, actually give them something physical. <laughs> um, but I just don't want kids to do maths and do problem solving. What I want them to do is absolutely to enjoy it. And, and I think you know, all of us have that sort of mission. Um, and I'm now doing my dream job um, with uh, Resolve Maths by Inquiry. Uh, it was my opening statement when I was interviewed by, by a teleconference. Um, and I'm absolutely on the hunt for, I, I did think about using the word fertile teachers, but that could be misinterpreted. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've, I've, what I'm after is people who reflect, people who think, but their classroom is fertile. And you know, we all would conjure up a really strong image of what that would be. And really, uh, if we collaborated on that and we made every classroom like that, I think we would have a pretty amazing country. Um, but what's going to be the legacy of this project? Well, yes, we're going to have a body of, of really exemplary, amazing resources. But the thing you can't put a value on is actually the community that will take the existing community, which is really strong and vibrant. Um, and this sort of event is a major thing. I mean, this teacher meet, I mean, we ran one in, in Alice Springs a few years ago. And uh, you know, I, I think this event has set the yardstick for me in terms of how it should run and the vibrancy and the, just the generosity of people sharing stuff. Um, so this community, I mean, most of the audience here, you know, Judy and I were going to retire and go off into the sunset, but um, <laughs> our big challenge in this country is, is how do we kind of do succession planning in terms of getting the next generation of teachers absolutely involved in their professional association, sharing the wisdom of their practice, giving workshops, um, you know, very much like what we saw today. So that's what I hope the legacy will be, is, is an amazing sort of resource. So I'm going to sort of tell a bit of a story. But last term, I mean, the last time I was in the school, St. Australian Senior College, I became acting assistant principal. And day two of the job, I had to do a re-entry meeting for Sh Shania, who had just belted another kid, and she got suspended because of about the third time for something like a six-week period. So she came into the meeting with her mother, and I had taught her mother about 20 years earlier. Um, she came in pretty sort of fired up, and you know we had to go through the normal sort of processes. Um, but really, the whole tenor of our, our discussion turned when I said, tell me what your dream is. What is it you hope to do? And she said, I'd really like to be an airline hostess. And I happened to be on a plane the next day, and I bailed up um, the, the very first uh, hostie that looked my way up and finished you know, with, a, with a cart. And um, Belinda was, was really generous uh, in saying, look, here's my mobile number, here's my email. 
we now start overnighting in Alice Springs and I would be delighted to come and talk to the kids. And it kind of brings me back to a really strong maxim that, I've, uh, that I, I try and just sort of remember is we actually can't begin to teach our kids well until we know what's in their lunchbox, until we know um, what their home setting is like, what their parents' aspirations are. Um, you know, not, not that you want to put people into little pigeonholes, but it's a really significant aspect of being an effective teacher and teaching your subject well is, is knowing the kids. Um, the single best bit of advice I give young teachers in, uh, in Alice Springs is get down to the basketball, get down to the netball, get down to the footy, and actually see the kids doing something. Um, I, I umpire Aussie rules footy, and that's called real football. Um, and, you know, I, I'm absolutely built for comfort, not for speed when I'm out there. Uh, I don't move real quick. But to be able to catch those kids doing what they love doing gives me so much um, money in the bank when I have to have those hard conversations with them. So I'd absolutely sort of recommend them. And Belinda and her, her colleague did a wonderful little talk to these kids, and these are kids who do not fit into mainstream schooling. Uh, and yet we're integrating some of them back into school for you know, year 10 and 11 and 12. And it's about just finding that journey for those kids. Uh, and I think it's a really important aspect of being a, a teacher. Um, in 1998, I did a keynote presentation at the Victorian Maths Conference. And the day before, I'd just been to the fourth funeral of a kid that had suicided nice. in Alice Springs. And I remember you know, about 150 people and there's just a hush that went over the audience. Our core business is actually well-being. But if we get that bit right, as well as teaching maths well, I think we have some amazing um, journeys that we can take on with our kids. Now, those sort of rare moments, I've got three kids, 22, 20 and 18. And you know, we've got some beautiful spots just out of our Springs. And Chloe and Heidi, who are now 20 and 18, uh, it was just amazing seeing them go tadpoling. You know, they're normally on their phones. They're absolutely, you know, wired with a screen for their lives. But just to see the absolute joy of doing what they're doing, I thought it was a really sort of special message. And <laughs> uh, Chloe and Heidi, you know, they both work in restaurants. They're both, you know, what I'd call foodies, spelled I-E. Um, they photograph food constantly. But if we relay that cartoon to kind of workshop settings, and I might sort of say, well, no one's taken a photo of me yet, or no one's taken a photo of this amazing cube, which you can make for yourself for very little money. But I, I think having something as sort of an artefact in your classroom, um, a, a phrase that I got from um, Robin Jorgensen and, and Steve Favell, who wrote a, a book, uh, an article called Viewing My Classroom as an Archaeological Dig. It's a metaphor. It's a really powerful metaphor. But we should be able to walk into each other's classrooms and to be able to make inferences, just like an archaeologist does, about the behaviour that went on, um, just by you know, what's on the walls. So giant post-it notes, I reckon, are you know, maths teacher's best friend. Just like you know, doing homemade um, resources so that you know, when the kids re-enter the, the setting, they immediately go back to um, you know, a situation that they've been in. John Mason calls it creating brief but vivid descriptions. And that they're a really important uh, aspect of problem solving. We should be able to say, I mean, I should be able to say to Stuart, you know, um, very hard to find uh, th three-way um, 19 mil plumbing fittings. That's three quarters of an inch in the old language. And uh, electrical conduit, you know, so it's a few words. But he should be able to re-enter the time that I made him do it in front of you all you know, in five years, ten years' time. And I think that's what we need to, yeah, not all the time, but whenever we can, try and create that vivid description for kids so that they relay a little bit of a movie. Um, uh, Jacob, who did the, um, the thing with Desmos, with the, you know, the equations, you know, I took a little video clip and I posted it to Twitter and it joined a few other fa fabulous photos. You know, I think that those, those little video clips, those movie clips are, are very important. Um, so my, my bag that um, Stuart just sort of unpacked, and I hope Amy doesn't, wherever Amy is, I hope okay. she doesn't think I'm stalking her, but, um, whoops, um, you are, you, you're in my sights to, become, to come to, whoops, I don't know why this. The kids love that on my photo page. Yeah, I think it's a post -it. 
you're in my sights to come up to Darwin or Alice Springs to run a session um, you know, for our conference. And, and I'd absolutely encourage you to get to the Mansway conferences, you know, get to you know, other conferences if your school can, can, can get you out. But I met Ollie uh, down at the Tasmanian conference and he's now moved to Melbourne and just picked up a job at Sunshine Secondary College, which is sort of a bit out there. Um, uh, they're doing some different things. Um, and one of the things I say to teachers is you've got 12 days to put two or three ideas from, from this event into practice. We can't do it all, but the problem with is, our challenge is, is after 12 days we get busy, it kind of drops below our radar, and I think it's really super, super important that to kind of create some urgency about yourself, about what you're going to do. And you can't do it, but pick just two or three things. But Ollie went away and started up a, a blog, and he's been really reflective. And, and I've just been really impressed with his sort of approach to things. And you know, I'd love to see him, you know, in seven, ten years' time, um, you know, helping to, to work with the next generation of teachers, because I think you know he would have a lot to offer. And I think there's people in his room that that should be part of your game plan, and you should be talking to people like Judy and others about, well, what was your journey to get there? Just like we talk to our kids. You know, what was your, your, you know, you get people in to talk to the kids, to, to share their journey, to become whatever it is they are doing. Uh, I think we need to be doing that as a teaching fraternity as well. Now, the idea of a back channel, um, Twitter is a back channel. The problem with Twitter is you've got to be 13 or older uh, to be able to use it. Um, but I, I want to sort of test it sort of right now in front of people. And it's really easy and I want to just introduce people to, to something. But this was an article the other day. This is, in case you don't recognise the, the national colours, they're Romania. And they're playing a friendly um, game of soccer against Spain. And it was, you know, reported around the place. But what they've done is they've come up with algorithms to put on the back of their shirts ra uh, rather than uh, just having the, the number. So I'm sort of always sort of on the hunt on how do you turn this around? How can I make something um, mathematical out of this. Now, it may not be quite high school, but I'm sure um, you know, we could sort of get into that space. So I'd like you to, to, to right now just to think of some kids that you're, are in your class and think, well, you know, who, who would offer something that would surprise me or impress me? And I think it's really important to sometimes think of, it's a bit like counsellors, they'll say, to, they'll have kids coming to them saying, look, I've got this friend and they've got this problem which is really code for, I've got the problem. You know, I think that sort of approach is kind of useful. So how we're going to work it is I've created a um, Today's Meet page, and I've made it last one year. You can make it last an hour, you can make it last a week, a, 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 a month, or three months. You don't have to join anything, you know, you know, apart from just putting in your name. You have absolutely no control over what kids put up. And um, some of the less savoury kids in my class, you know, they will pretend they're someone else and then they'll put something up that will really stir some kids up. So I have to do a lot of groundwork before I sort of get into it. Um, but what I'd like people to do right now is if you've got your eye thing uh, <laughs> <laughs> in your pocket, could you please just go to today's meet? And what I'm going to do is, is switch across to um, the uh, website. And I might just resize that. Right, can someone hit something and put something in? And uh, South Max sixteen. Sorry. I Jump, jumped the gun at there, but did not. Yeah. So today's meet dot com slash sasmac sixteen. So people got that? Yeah. And now I've got to figure out which tab. My kids always give me a hard time about the number of tabs that are open. I'll just, I'll just create a new one. <laughs> so 
Okay. Yeah, this is like the school class. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's put in. All right, so there's a good one. Three factorial. So I introduced some different sort of notation. But I guess as a class, just being able to see stuff flying by, I think it goes from the top down. Yep, there we go. <laughs> now, the, the, the most frustrating conversation I had as a, um, a, a senior teacher at Centralian Senior College um, last year was Oops, didn't like that. Yeah, we know that. Okay. We might be winging it in a minute. What was, what sanction are we going to apply to kids if they pull their mobile phone out in class? And, you know, I, I've, it just, just did my head in. Maybe it was time for me to go, I don't know. Um, but, you know, it, it really became a bit of an issue. So I've always been sort of on the hunt for different sort of approaches. So. All right, I might just sort of keep going like this. So just around the corner from the WMT office in Adelaide is some amazing sculptures. And I always sort of thinking, how can I use that sculpture to sort of tell a story? And um, we want our kids to sort of hear the tune, but in terms of problem solving, what we want them to be able to do is change their orientation towards a problem and, and, and look at it in a different sort of way. And I think it's quite a powerful sort of metaphor of trying to get that sort of flexibility and that agility in how we tackle a problem um, with, with kids. Um, just like, you know, we hope that, you know, they will appreciate, you know, really public art um, that is mathematical in nature. And I think um, every school should have one of these. So if you've got a friendly metalwork teacher, if metalwork still exists, because um, it's being taken out of a lot of schools, um, it'd be really worth trying to get them in this sort of space. Um, equally, it's another um, sculpture that's just amazing, um, just near the National Gallery in, sorry, not the National Gallery, the, yeah, it is, it's part of the National Gallery, just near the National Library in, in Canberra. And it has some really interesting properties uh, in terms of its sort of topology of, of how many uh, faces touch how many other faces. And, you know, to think that sending kids off on a bit of a, you know, tell me the history of this, uh, they'll come up with, um, you know, some of these problems are quite old. They're, they're from a long time ago. Now, unfortunately, this isn't going to play if I'm not in. What I'm going to do is save it. I'm going to quit. And I'm going to go back to it. Laptop. Yeah, this is a lot of 
Oops. You could you could unplug it and if the microphone down to your your speaker on your laptop. Oh, that works. So this is a sorting network and I was doing some work with a primary school just out of Alice Springs, oh sorry just out of Darwin and the audio is not really, really important for it. Um, but basically the, the teachers were just um, coming up, comparing themselves and then the biggest went to the left, the smallest went to the right. And these numbers, or these words, uh, which were random at the start, end up being sorted uh, in terms of their, um, their order in terms of the dictionary. And the lady in um, purple, she was quite taken with this idea. And the, the 12 day sort of mantra, I do it fairly often. Anyway, um, so I did a workshop on a Friday. Um, by the Sunday, uh, she sent me an email with a photo of her sorting network that she'd made on a, a big tarpaulin. And she uses it every day. And she does it with language work. She does it with decimals, fractions, um, you know, kids' heights, uh, you know, a whole range of things. And I, it just, it was a really heartening for me as a, as a person. Not my idea. I went to a computer science conference. I saw it. I made one. And it's just really good to see people, um, you know, take it on with a bit of vibrancy and, and do stuff. So just, uh, you know, it, it's an idea. It's visual. Very good thing to do at a staff meeting. Very good thing to do if you've got an open day for your school, uh, where you've got prospective parents coming in, and, and it, you know, and getting the kids to run it. You don't need you know adults a, at all. In terms of making kids enjoy um, problem solving and enjoy doing their maths, um, I, I think you've got to have stuff around, and you know that's an example of the stuff, um, and you know various sorts of puzzles. Um, I've got the luxury when I was last teaching of just. The only person that used my classroom was me. And I know that's not the reality for in many, many schools, you know, space is sort of tight. Um, I think whiteboards are really, really important. Um, the, the couple that I absolutely favour and, and use all the time um, is, is two sorts. Um, you know, one sort just, you know, blank on one side and a, a grid on the other. Um, you know, if they're not in your classroom, I reckon they absolutely should be. And just a, a sleeved version where you can just put in a photocopy master and get kids to work on the top um, and, and rubbing it out. And again, you know, I say to the kids, pull your phone out, you know, date it, put your name on it, take a photo of it, and, and then that way you've got a record of what the kids are doing. That is a big criticism of these, is where's the record of the kids' work? Um, just, you know, various versions and, you know, the fact you can use little mirrors to get kids to, um, you know, draw the reflection of a, of a shape so they're looking at the, the image of it in the mirror, not um, the actual shape. Um, you know, I think it's a really powerful sort of idea. And, you know, Polly is, you know, how to solve a book. Well, you know, this is sort of, you know, my version of it. You know, I think a version of that should be in every classroom. And it really begs the question, if it's good enough for one classroom, Surely it actually should be school-wide. You know, come with some shared agreement. Um, I know some teachers in remote settings, they do particular problems, and they'll take a photo of the kid doing the problem, and they'll just attach a little image of that right next to it. Because, you know, often they're dealing with kids that are pre-literate, but the kids then know, oh, that's what we were doing. So that's what, you know, making a smaller, um, you know, problem sort of means. So on my wiki, you know, I just sort of got going and made them all as a word document so people can, you know, amend the language and stuff. Um, but then I got sort of interested in sort of ideas about metacognition. And again, just sort of having them as, as posters where kids have to uh, think about their thinking or talk about their thinking. And I've just sort of kind of codified it in a way, you know, without any sort of language. So the kids actually have to, at a meta level, have a deeper understanding to even know what those various posters mean. Um, yeah, and even just a toolbox, and again, with younger kids or maybe disinclined kids, um, as a way of, of <laughs> celebrating, you know. But then another version of a strategy board is, is have them right across the room and you put little post-it notes about the attributes um, of a particular problem in terms of what strategy might you have used. Um, I think to get kids to enjoy it, 
Um, this is all about um, co-primeness, you know, billiard ball bounces. It's been around for a long, long time. There's, you know, lots of little video simulations and, and computer um, programs that you can, you know, rip down off the web. But I'm a big fan of actually starting uh, with something very kinesthetic. It creates that brief but vivid description. Um, another source that I use to just keep channeling towards kits, and it's, it's a very safe place, is brilliant.org. And, you know, lo just lots of really counterintuitive, juicy problems um, that might be worth, you know, putting in a school newsletter and, you know, you could run, um, you know, a little prize for, for kids that sort of come up with it. Um, an oldie but a goodie. Um, I occasionally, when I can, get down to a little um, puzzle group at Adelaide Uni called 100 Factorial. Um, and this guy um, who runs it, um, David Butler, you know, he constantly dips into these books and um, Wilma only lent me this book and, you know, sure enough there's some really good puzzles in it. And it's just an example of one, uh, you know, it's been around for a long time, there's lots of variations, but I guess what I like is it challenges kids, you could act it out, you could get some concrete initiatives, um, the kids have to invent a notation um, to, to run with it. Um, so what I'll do is I'll make sure I tweet that, and if I can just implore people, if you're not on Twitter, get on Twitter. It is absolutely sensational, and the back channel for this event has been really active. Um, just all sorts of just little quirky things that just come up, and I think it's really important to provoke the kids. If I was back in the classroom, I'd print that out, and I'd just have it up on the wall, and the kids would gather around at recess and lunch and, and have a bit of a look. Um, a beautifully mathematical um, photo. You know, I, I just think it's, you know, whoever thought of that, it's one of those things, I wish I'd thought of it. That's, to me, that's good art. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, not a hard hat in sight, so. <laughs> um, now, we don't have um, uh, audio easily, so I might just sort of skip through, but um, a great movie, but it's just got some little lessons, and I'll, I'll just play the second one, because I'm sure this is... Um Sorry. <coughs> Actually, I've just realised uh, it should have been this one that I played. Sorry. So, you know, I keep sort of looking at that. So, 
I hope that's a, a little bit of a window. If I can leave you with create some urgency, 12 days, do two or three of you have amazing ideas that have been shared today. Um, I, I reckon Judy will go home a happy girl. But Judy, thank you for an amazing event and yeah, I'd like to book in for next year, please. Yeah. <laughs>